Which video shooting app is better for iPhone, the new Blackmagic camera app, or Filmic Pro? In this video, I'm gonna compare the two apps so you can choose the best one for your needs. When the Blackmagic app was released, the price was what got our attention. But as always, free does come with a slight catch. I'll talk about that later, but first, let's look at the two apps, what they are, and how they work. Neither app supports photo shooting. If you need a photo shooting app, there are others available, such as the Moment app. Filmic also offers a separate app for photos called First Light. Filmic Pro was one of the first camera apps for iPhone to allow manual control when shooting video, and it still remains one of the most popular. It's now over 10 years old, and it's been through many changes. By contrast, the Blackmagic app is a newer addition to the market, having been released just a few months ago, and it is currently only available for iPhone, whereas Filmic Pro is available for both iPhone and Android. The Filmic Pro UI has been through a series of changes over the years. This is the current version 7 interface, and it's the result of a big revamp that came with the introduction of the subscription. Now, previously, the interface looked like this. If you were a Filmic Pro owner before version 7, you can still actually access this version, and it's now called Filmic Legacy. For, for this video, I'm only going to refer to the new version, you know, version 7. Filmic Pro now works in four different modes, which you access via the button top left. The modes are Auto, Reticle, Center Weight, and Manual. On the other hand, Blackmagic doesn't use modes, so what you see is pretty much what you get. I'm not actually a Blackmagic camera user, but I'm told that this interface is actually based on the Blackmagic camera interface. And I would say that whereas Filmic Pro kind of does its own thing, Blackmagic has a much more traditional approach to the user interface with key settings and information laid out around the screen. So we've got shutter speed, the iris, we've got the number counter, I'm just gonna tick over as soon as you start recording. We've got ISO, white balance, tint, resolution, all laid out across the top. If you want extra controls, they're mostly locked away under settings, which is accessed via the cog bottom right. In a sense, the Blackmagic app is what you might imagine a manual control app would look like if it were designed by Apple because you can tap the screen to set exposure and focus, a long press to lock it, and that's just like the native app. On the other hand, Filmic Pro uses what they call reticles to control exposure and focus. So we've got the circle for exposure, and then there's the square for focus. And these reticles are really at the core of how Filmic Pro works and one of its defining features. Personally, I do prefer to have these main settings displayed so it's more easy to see, you don't have to tap something to find out. And to change them, all you've got to do is tap them. Here it tells us that we have the main camera selected, which is the 24 millimeter equivalent of my iPhone 15 Pro. So just tap it and then select the camera on the right. And with Fury Pro, it's similar. We've also got a button, but it doesn't change visually. So you can't actually see immediately the currently selected camera. You have to tap it, open it up to see. As well, we can see the frame rate and resolution settings, but we can't tap those to change them, as you can with the Blackmagic app. To see shutter speed and ISO displayed, we need to switch to manual mode in Filmic Pro. Now, one issue with Blackmagic is not being able to move the whole focal range in one movement. In Filmic Pro, you can, and that makes shooting manual focus pulls much easier. As well, Filmic Pro has an automated focus system, so you can set two points and have the app move focus from one to the other smoothly. And this also works for zoom. And Blackmagic currently doesn't have that feature. Filmic Pro allows you to customize the interface. You just go into settings and then interface, and now you can add or remove certain features. For example, framing guides. If you toggle this on, you now have a bunch of options for grids and safety zone guides. And you can also change the color of those grids. Now, Blackmagic also supports a similar set of guides and grids. On the right, tap the button at the top of this menu. As well, some analytics overlays are kept here. So here you could set, for example, a safety zone guide, but then you can also adjust the size of it. And that's something that you can't do with the Filmic Pro app. 
when we talk about hardware support, we're talking about features which help you out when you're using anamorphic lenses, depth of field adapters and gimbals. Over the years, Filmic Pro has built up a number of features which support hardware. Now, if you just tap the cog button and then go to hardware, there's support for all the DJI Osmo mobile gimbals, as well as for the Zhuin Smooth gimbals, Q3, Q4, plus Smooth 4 and Smooth 5. There's also support for the Movi Cinema Robot, which is a gimbal that was actually discontinued some years ago. Currently, Blackmagic doesn't have any support for gimbals, kind of as you would expect for a new app because they actually have to work with the company to get access to the features of the gimbal. Keyboard control allows you to use an external keyboard to control functions in the Filmic Pro app. There's settings for anamorphic adapters, both the 1.33 and 1.55 versions. There's also an option to de-squeeze in the preview only, which means you can de-squeeze the video when you're editing instead. Blackmagic does have 1.33 and 1.55 anamorphic de-squeeze options, but no preview only option. Filmic Pro also has settings for using the depth of field adapter. If you use something like a B-Script depth of field adapter to mount a regular camera lens to your iPhone, you will get an upside down image. These settings allow you to flip the image the right way up. So again, the Blackmagic app doesn't have those kind of settings yet. So I would say that overall, Filmic Pro has far more hardware support than the Blackmagic app. But when it comes to basic settings, there's not really that much difference. However, Filmic Pro has a greater range of resolution settings, all the way down to 540p, whereas Blackmagic just has the main three. Filmic Pro has all the codecs and color spaces in one place, whereas Blackmagic separates them out. And that actually means that you can mix and match them a bit more. So for example, this means with the Blackmagic app, you can have combinations which aren't available in the native app or with Filmic Pro. For example, you can have it set to H.264 codec, as well as the Rec 2020 HDR color space. Whereas in the Apple app, you need to shoot HEVC to get the HDR Dolby Vision. So I just tested this and it does indeed come out as H.264 Dolby Vision. And this is something that you can't do with Filmic Pro. So the Blackmagic app does have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to choosing your video format. Filmic Pro has its own log, one for 8-bit recording and one for 10-bit recording. But if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, you can now shoot using Apple's native log. So if you're using your iPhone's native app, go into camera settings and then formats and toggle on ProRes. Another setting pops up and that allows you to choose which type of ProRes with the log version at the bottom. The Filmic Pro and Blackmagic camera apps also allow you to choose this Apple log but of course only if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. In Blackmagic, it's in the color space settings. In Filmic Pro, it's in the video settings. The Apple Log uses the ACES, or Academy Color Encoding System. Basically, that's an industry standard, which is used for managing your color during production and post-production. The only real difference here is that Filmic has its own log profile, as well as Apple's, whereas the Blackmagic just has Apple's log. So note that this Apple Log setting is the first time that we're actually able to switch off the iPhone's dynamic tone mapping. You've probably heard about this already, but if you haven't, problem with tone mapping, while it gives you extra dynamic range, it means you can never really fully lock exposure. In most Android devices, you can actually switch it off, but until now, you could not do that with an iPhone, even when using an app like Filmic Pro. However, using the native app, you will need to shoot ProRes Log to deactivate it, which does mean that you're going to get larger file sizes. The advantage of using the Blackmagic app is that you don't need to use ProRes. You can actually shoot the Apple Log in any of the available codecs. Like I said, you can mix and match codecs with color profiles. So you can select H.265 or H.264 and then choose Apple Log. Working with large video files can be tricky when you have limited memory and, as well, slow transfer speeds. Here, the Blackmagic app allows you to record directly to an external drive, like you can with a native app. Open settings, scroll down to Media, 
And where it says Save Clips 2, that's where you want to go. Now choose Files and then Browse, and then you search for your drive. So it's a little bit long-winded, but you get there in the end. So you can actually create a new folder and then save your files in it, or just save to the drive in general without a folder. And this is obviously going to help you organize your files as you're recording them. Now at the time of making this video, Filmic Pro does not allow direct to external drive recording. So let's just run through a few other little features that are not like deal breakers or anything, but it's just nice to know the difference between the two apps. Filmic Pro has a feature called Focus Assist. When you use the manual focus control, the camera zooms in so that you can better see the area that you're focusing on and then you can be more accurate with your focus. To enable or disable, just go into interface settings, toggle on and off, or change the amount that it zooms in. The Blackmagic app enables you to change the way shutter speed is displayed, either as regular fractions of a second, as we're used to seeing it, like 1 over 48 or 1 over 96, for example, or you can set it to display the shutter angle. And the shutter angle refers to the mechanism in movie cameras that shoot film. So you might prefer that. Personally, I just prefer to use the fractions of seconds. If you tap the microphone icon in the Filmic Pro interface, you can open up audio settings. Now you can adjust the gain and you can switch mics. In Blackmagic, you need to go into settings and then audio to find the audio source. Slightly more long-winded in the Blackmagic app, but the Blackmagic app does have quite extensive monitor settings. So if you're using an external monitor, then you can customize the way it appears quite a bit here. Now both apps have the full range of stabilization settings, but Filmic Pro introduces this extra latency when you switch to higher levels. In other words, you get a kind of dramatic delay when you move the camera, and this doesn't happen with the Blackmagic app. When I tested it at the extreme level, both videos came out equally stable. So as it's easier to film without that delay, Blackmagic wins that comparison, I would say. So Filmic Pro allows you to set the app so the record button can be used as a pause button. You just go into settings, device, and toggle on stitch recorded footage. Now, when you stop recording, you get a pause symbol inside the record button and all clips will be stitched into one long clip. Long press the record button so it goes white again, and that will mean the clip doesn't stitch to the next clip. So it's like you can start a new clip. So as we know, Filmic Pro now requires a subscription, whereas the Blackmagic app is free. And so that's that, or is it? Well, not quite. If you want to use the Blackmagic app to automatically upload footage, to your DaVinci Resolve project, which was something that they focused on quite a bit at the release, it's actually no longer free. Well, it is if you already pay for a Blackmagic plan, which includes one or more project libraries. In the UK, that's gonna start at six pounds per month for two gigabytes of storage, which I'm sure we all know is really a tiny amount of storage. For two terabytes of storage, for example, we're looking at 78 pounds a month. And I don't really think many iPhone users are going to be opting for that, unless they also happen to be pro filmmakers. So yes, the Blackmagic app is free, as long as you're not interested in the DaVinci auto upload feature. So both apps have many features, especially Filmic Pro, and this video isn't going to be long enough to go into all of them. So I've just focused on the main features, and I've covered a few features that I was asked about, in the comments of my last video on this Blackmagic app. But when choosing a camera app, it really depends on which features matter to you most. I personally like to keep things simple, so I'd probably go with the Blackmagic app. The fewer buttons that I have to press to get shooting, the better, really. Recently, I actually talked about the importance of simplicity for speed in a lesson on Patreon. So imagine if you were sketching and every time you drew a line with your pencil, you had to go and sharpen the pencil again. You'd get pretty frustrated and the quality of your sketch would suffer. When I'm shooting and editing, I want to get into a flow and be creative. Creativity is really about playing and experimenting. And that's why I designed my online courses to strip away everything that gets in the way of your creativity. And because I personally put creativity first, that's why I probably edge towards the Blackmagic app. That said, I shot five short films and a documentary using Filmic Pro. So it kind of still has a special place in my heart, really. You know, it's still a great app 
and it's great for shooting video. With either of these apps, you're not gonna go wrong. That's it for me, happy filming.